This feels a little bit like deja vu because we were all sitting in these exact same seats last night watching the Golden State Warriors, but that, that might not be the only reason that it feels like a little bit of having deja vu. Oh, let's roll the highlight director, <laughs> Kathy, here. Yonsei, the baby. Worst loss of the season. That, that's being thrown around again as the Warriors looked a little bit wobbly late last night. Not early, though. Steph Curry, his huh. pregame warm up here, tunnel shot, full court, soars through the air, and somehow makes the shot. Just let's take one more view of he, this. He stood there for a while to let it really and, soak in. And I'm not impressed. And guess what? It away. carry on into the game. Look at it right here. Steph Curry with the shot, boy. Uh, ah, he has found his rhythm. And look, Steph Curry, I'm telling you right now, he is in a zone at the perfect time. He's playing with great joy. We saw at the beginning of the season, he was had his head down, and rightfully so. But right now, uh, 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 uh. Well, he finished with a game-high 41 points here. But watch this. Okay, so Mason Plumley hard foul on Brandon Pajemski here. Jonathan Kaminga shoves Plumley. Draymond stays out of trouble, just making a couple of faces here. Ty Lu was given his te second technical foul and ejected. The Clippers, though, they'd mount a comeback anyway, Chanae. Let me tell you, when you have someone that you can pop into the game without Kawhi Leonard that can shoot five for seven from three, Norm Powell, my goodness, he what? Like, we're talking about Steph. He had the heater in the fourth quarter late in the game. I mean, some of those, the, the ability to move the ball around, yeah. that's why the Clippers are better because they are able to pick up the slack when one of their stars are not performing. So Pajemski hits the three here after, to your point, Norm Powell has 12 points in the fourth quarter. But then, watch this, Clay Thompson fouls oh, anyway, even though Steve Kerr urging his team not to foul. We're just going to take one more look at this. Steve Kerr, he can't believe it. He was imploring them not to do this. The Clippers walk away with the win. So let's take a listen to Steph Curry after the game. If I'm not mistaken, we're probably like 500 at home. Huh? So we're very average. Very average doesn't get it done in this league. Does this feel like a little bit of a relapse to what happened earlier, or is this just a one-off, you think? Uh, I think this is a one-off. I think, you know, we played, uh, we played a really solid game, 34 assists and nine turnovers, but the game got away from us defensively uh, there in the fourth. All right, so Steve Kerr is just calling it a one-off, but the Warriors' season performance maybe suggests that it's a trend, because look at this. The Warriors have lost six games this season where they've led by 15 or more points. That's their most in any season over the last 25. So as for this year, the team, only team, right, with more blown big leads with the San Antonio Spurs, and speaking in terms of standings, they're the worst team in the West. So that's the company that the Warriors are keeping. So, so Perk, is Steph right? Are they just average? Hell no, he's wrong. They're above average. They're not good. They're not great. But anytime you have Steph Curry on your team, I won't disrespect them and call them average because of his greatness and him being able to elevate this team, right, to, to you know, make a playoff run or win basketball games. But I think, you know, this is a learning process right now for the Golden State Warriors. Uh, you know, Jonathan Kaminga, Pajinski, all of these young guys, right? They're figuring out the new them, right? The new wave, the new system. So I wouldn't call them average. They've been playing some exceptional basketball of late. Yeah, I agree. When he used the word you average, do? I guess what he's defining that as is anything but a championship team that's average for us. We've won four like championships people, like in the last C's decade. Get degrees. Yeah, that, C's that get degrees. Like, no, no, no. In the Bay Area, they're Stanford, and they're like Ivy League on the basketball court. A now, or no way. Oh, yeah, Aaron. Yeah, C's <laughs> get degrees. Gonna work yeah, yeah, we'll work get it. <laughs> but when I looked at this Warriors team, I just started thinking about a lot of times their strengths are no longer there. Yeah. You know, fourth quarter, they struggled. A lot of close games. We used to talk about the Golden State Warriors as owning the third quarter, owning the second half. That's gone. We talked about them being strength in numbers. Now they're trying to search out roles for their players and changing the hierarchy of, okay, Steph is here. Now we need Draymond as the engine. Now is it Kaminga or how are we going to win this game? And most importantly, how are we going to close that game? That was heartbreaking to watch that situation with Clay and sort of going for that foul and realizing, because like he, he was not necessarily a factor late, but then to come in knowing that you need three point shooters and it doesn't work in that, that favor, it just right. feels like the avalanche, it was a snowball and it's an avalanche for him. Well, and the pressures, right? If he's been benched in different games late in the fourth quarter and he's on the floor in this one and you saw very clearly, clearly St uh, Steve Kerr going, don't foul, don't foul. And then literally falling to his knees on the sidelines here, Brian, that's not really what you want to see. Yeah, in all honesty, the fact that they're 500 is kind of a failure. 
because they should be a way better than 500 team, even with the Draymond suspension. I'm just going to take that out. You, you mentioned earlier, you showed the, the full screen graphic there about what their record is in these games where they blow these big leads. But when you're a 500 team at home, I mean, that's not acceptable. 500 on the road means you should be a winning team at home. Mm. Janae, they used to be a great home team. Correct. And they're just, look at that. Like, you know, a team that's 500 on the road should be in the top six, quite frankly. And so you also compute that they've lost 19 games where they've been in clutch time. So there's 17 and 19. 19 clutch time games. This is really, you know, coming into this break, they really got to be thinking we should have a lot more wins than we do. Right, but we can coulda, woulda, shoulda, kind of mm -hmm. all we want. The question at the end of the day is, let's say they are average, at least by the numbers or at least by Golden State standards. I get what you're saying. No team with Steph Curry can truly be average. Do they have a path to get out of that spot? Yeah, it's just not this year, right? And I, I think we got to lower the expectations and we got to actually go and be patient as fans of Steph Curry throughout this season. They're not going to make a magical, magical run and at the end of the day be, you know, crowned five-time NBA champions. That's not going to happen. What we want to see is them continue to move in the right direction, the growth of the young guys. Let Kaminga, if, the, if they get into the playoffs, let him get a series under his belt where he's playing meaningful minutes as that second option. And then you go into the offseason, and then we could get back to the expectations I mean, for the Golden State Warriors. Though. I mean, the other way to look at that, you can say that they should be better, which also means that they're better than their record. So maybe if they can catch fire at the right time, which is what they have done, mm -hmm. and continue to play better defense. Now, they didn't play good defense on the stretch in this game. Maybe they can overachieve from where they're at right now, Perk. What is That's, over? What is your definition? Well, of I think the well, thing right is, now they're in the play-in, so they make the make the top six. You know, the every, Miami Heat messed us all up. Because I think now that's the standard of if you get hot at the right time, you can make it to the NBA Finals. That is so much harder, especially in the West this year, than what that circumstance was for the Miami Heat last year. And so I think for us to say, oh, maybe the Golden State Warriors, who I'm looking at the standings are currently 10th, can do that in a conference where the Clippers look good. I mean, without Kawhi, yeah. the, a lot of the teams have improved. The Timberwolves, OKC, and then you've got the Juggernauts, you've got the, and the Nuggets. Like, overall... I think that sort of messed us up looking at what the Heat were able to do. Here's the path. The path is that they have the third easiest remaining schedule in the NBA. But you got to win games like last night. We were talking about the Warriors as getting their groove back, so I don't want to overreact to one game. But it's the fact that we're seeing the same trends over and over in the games that they're losing. They can't afford to not beat the Clippers on their home floor without Kawhi Leonard in a game that they were up by double digits. And when, the, when Paul George was struggling in the first half yep. and he fouled out. But let me give some props to Russell Westbrook. I thought yesterday... When PG went out, I thought he did an exceptional job of actually being an underrated floor general, right? Dishing out the pill, making time passes on time, on target. But again, we go back to the Golden State Warriors. I mean, they're going to get into the postseason. I strongly believe that. And then they're going to get bounced out in the first round. Then we just look forward to Knicks. Well, it did, it did take seven games against the Sacramento Kings last year and just an absolutely heroic effort by Steph Curry to make it into the second round. So we'll see what this year holds.